Welcome back to my channel, Over the Hill Fitness. Dr. Rom Crespo here, back at you. For those of y'all that have been following me on my health journey, thank you so much for your support. For those of y'all that are new, go ahead and click on subscribe and go ahead and click on the bell ringer there on the right so you can be notified of upcoming content on Over the Hill Fitness. For once again, for those of y'all that have been following me and supporting me, thank you so much for your support. I've been on program now for 10 months. The program that I'm on is called the Optavia 5 and 1 Optimal Weight Program. If you are not familiar with the Optavia 5 and 1 Optimal Weight Program, pretty much what it is is you get five fuelings that comes in your monthly box. And then you have one lean and green that you prepare. You learn how to prepare that uh, through the guidelines through Optavia. Um, you do that for dinner, for lunch, for breakfast, whatever fits your schedule. So you take those six meals and you spread those out in two to three hour increments. And that is what gets you to optimal weight in this great, great program. So those of y'all that have been following me, you know my health journey so far, 123 pounds. I got into Wonderland. That is amazing, haven't been in Wonderland, which is under 200 pounds since high school. So, so, so excited for that. Uh, leveling up my health right now, getting into the gym more, using that Optavia Active line, really getting my energy going and getting in accountability groups, helping us out. We have a like-minded group of community members that want to accomplish the same thing. So those of y'all that are looking for an opportunity to get your health journey going, reach out. I'd love to answer any questions that you have. So today what I'm going to be doing is showing what we do with some of our fuelings. If you have not gotten a Dash Mini Waffle or Dash Mini Griddle, you're missing out. You need to get one of these items because it is a staple in this program. It makes the fuelings so much better makes them bigger i know the little packets that come with some of the boxes are good and you can put them in the microwave and they're real real simple but i like to use the waffle maker and the griddle because it makes the fuelings a little bit bigger a little more hearty a little more filling uh, just this looks better and you can do a lot more things with them uh, calling fueling hacks as we've seen there's a lot of videos out there about fueling hacks i've done a few of them uh, but i wanted to show you today just how to make fuelings in the waffle makers and the griddle so if you don't already have a dash mini waffle maker or a griddle you need to get one and i'll leave a link in the comments on where to get those those are real simple they're about ten dollars in Amazon. I think you can get them at Target and a couple other places. I've seen people get them at resale stores as well. So you can get them real cheap. They're all around, but it is, it's just going to make a difference in the fuelings that you have on this program. So here we go. All right. So this is what we need to start off. We have the mini waffle maker here and the mini griddle. As you can see, the little light thing on the top fell off of mine because I use these every day. Um, so these are real cheap. I'll probably replace that later. I tried to put it back on, but it did not work. So we have the waffle maker and we have the griddle. Now let's take a look at the fuelings that we're gonna be working with today. And you can do this with a variety of fuelings. So here we go. All right, so here are the fuelings that I'm gonna be working with today. Now I could do a a YouTube short for each one of these, but I thought it'd be good just to kind of combine it together. You can just flip through, fast forward to the ones that you want to try. So we have the chocolate chip cookie mix. We have wild strawberry shake mix. We have the maple brown sugar oatmeal. You can also do the apple oatmeal as well. Uh, the peanut butter shake, the golden butterscotch blondie, which I like to mix with the golden pancake. You could also probably do that with the chocolate chip pancake the rich dark chocolate shake mix, the cinnamon roll cake, that's one of the new fuelings. Once again, the golden pancake mix, they also have chocolate chip pancake mix, the decadent brownie mix, the decadent chocolate brownie mix, the cheddar biscuit mix, another one of the new fuelings, the roasted garlic mashed potatoes, and the cheesy buttermilk cheddar mix. So we're, gonna, we're gonna go ahead and do waffles for all of these fuelings. Here we go. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and plug in both of the dash waffle maker and the griddle. The little blue light turns on and we're gonna let that heat up until the blue light turns off and then we'll be ready to go. All right, first up we're gonna do the shakes. 
So all you're going to need is three tablespoons of water for the shakes. So I'm just going to mix one up here and then I'm going to put it in the waffle maker. And then I'll show you what each one looks like. We're going to start off with the strawberry. The wild strawberry shake is my favorite shake in the program. So those of you that are on program, if you have not had the wild strawberry shake, go ahead and purchase that one. And sometimes these little bags come out and it shows you the little place where to open it. And if you don't do it exactly where it is, you're going to have a hard time. So this one took a little bit, but I was able to get it. Put all that mix in there. And I have my handy dandy mini kitchen tool here. These are real good because you can just wipe it off there as you're mixing so you don't miss out any part of the fueling. You just kind of scrape it off there, pick it back up, bring it back down to the batter. Just try to scrape off as much as you can so you don't lose any. It doesn't take long for the shakes to mix up. Look at that, nice and thick. All right, let's take it over to the waffle maker. All right, the light has turned off on the waffle maker. So we're gonna go ahead and open that up. Don't forget to get your cooking spray. We always use Pam. Other cooking sprays aren't the best uh, when we're dealing with the waffle maker, so Pam always works, so we use that. Just do a couple little dabs on the top and the bottom. And then we're just gonna take the mix and just put it in there. Try not to lose any of the batter so you can get the whole thing. You can do two smaller portions, but I like to do one big one. And just scrape off the remainder on there so we don't lose out on any. Spread it out as much as you can. And to avoid any spillover, I like taking another little kitchen tool and just bringing it down. Oops, it kind of fell a little bit there, but just kind of hold it up just a little bit. All right, so it doesn't spill out. And once you give it a few seconds on that to cook a little bit on the top, you can go ahead and let it go. And then we're gonna leave that in there. They say till this little blue light turns off, but I like to look at the smoke that is coming out of the waffle maker when that smoke dissipates, that is when it's ready to go. So don't always depend on the blue light turning off. It could work for some, but if you want the best results, definitely wait till the smoke disappears from the waffle maker and then it will be ready to go. But it shouldn't take more than about three to four minutes. Let's see what it looks like in three to four minutes. All right, so that's been about three to four minutes. We have our handy mini kitchen tool here. Let's go ahead and open it up. Okay, this one's coming out pretty good. Um, if it doesn't, if it kind of sticks to the top, sometimes it'll stick to the top. I just use a little knife just to kind of pierce through a couple of the little edges there, but this one came out good. I like to use a little dessert plate to put my fuelings in, my little waffles, look at that. That is your strawberry shake waffle. Look at that beautiful thing. Let's look at the other one. All right, here is the peanut butter shake as a waffle. Remember, three tablespoons of water, mix it up, put it in the waffle maker for about three to four minutes until the smoke disappears and then we're ready. So let's open it up. Oh, this one came out real good. Didn't even stick to the top. It's a little softer, so you can keep it in a little bit longer if you like it crunchy, but look at that. Beautiful. I'm going to show you the chocolate shake one because this one came out a little bit thinner than the other ones. So just so you don't have overflow on there. So we're going to go ahead and put that in there. So this one I'm going to make still the one, but slowly put it in there. And then we're going to have to hold that top just a little bit longer so it doesn't overfill. Let it sit there a little bit. It's got a lot over here, so I don't want it to overflow. Try to let it cook just a little bit before I close it. Use my handy dandy mini kitchen tool. 
So as you can see, it's kind of pushing over. So if I were to close this right now, it would spill over. So I'm just gonna slowly let it hit the top just a little bit. And I'm gonna hold it there and not let it close all the way. If I see it seeping over, I'm gonna pick it up just a little bit. So it doesn't overflow. You see, it really wants to come out because it was really thin. So maybe two tablespoons of water might be better for the chocolate, but I'm still gonna do the three so I can get it the same as the other two shakes that I made. So doing well, just hold it up, just kind of just kind of monitor it so it doesn't over overflow on the dash because then that's gonna be a cleanup nightmare that you may have. But these things clean up real well, so it's not a real, real big deal. So now I'm gonna go ahead and let it go there. Got a little bit on this side, a little bit on this side, but not a whole, whole lot. So it should be good in about three to four minutes. Remember the blue light, don't worry about the blue light. Look at the smoke that's coming up. Once that smoke is gone, you are ready to go. All right, so the chocolate one is ready. When I was lifting it up, I was seeing that it was kind of getting stuck to the top. So remember, I just used my little knife just to kind of pierce through the edges there and get it down so we don't have a separation. I'm gonna use my handy mini kitchen tool to get the rest. And if it sticks to the bottom as well, you can use the knife as well, but usually it comes out pretty good. Look at that, it's coming off, coming off, coming off. Look at that, look at that. All right, let's try the next. Next, we're gonna do the maple and brown sugar oatmeal. Now you can do four to six tablespoons of water and probably make a couple of waffles. Uh, but I like to do just four tablespoons of water and one tablespoon of egg whites. Now that can be considered, you know, part of a, a, a lean, like a really small portion of a lean. So I really don't count it because uh, only one tablespoon is not a whole lot of egg white, but that's just to kind of fluff it up a little bit. And we're going to be using the griddle. So we'll start off with the four tablespoons of water. Follow that with one tablespoon of egg whites. So then we're going to mix in the oatmeal fueling. Our handy dandy mini kitchen tool there. It comes out a little watery, but it's okay. We can let it sit so we can thicken up a little bit, but I just like putting it in there and I'll show you how that looks next after we mix it up. Very good, smell that oatmeal. Take a look. All right, next. So for this one, I like to use the griddle to kind of make like an oatmeal cookie. So I'm gonna open that up. Don't forget your Pam. A couple little sprays. And because it's in the griddle, it's not as dangerous as the waffle maker for it to overspill. So it's got a good amount there. We're gonna top it off. Slowly let it cook just a little bit so it doesn't have it that overspill it. So it's coming off just a little bit, but we're gonna put that on there. It's got a good amount. Now we can go ahead and close that up. It's not gonna push over like the waffle maker does. And once again, we're not so worried about the light, more the smoke. So once that smoke it disappears, then we can go ahead and get it. I do like when the light turns off to just flip it over so we can go ahead and cook the other side, even though it's on top and bottom, but the bottom tends to get more out of the cooking than the top does because it's not all the way up. When that light turns off, I'm going to flip it over 
and then cook the other side and let the steam disappear as well. So we'll see what it looks like. All right, lights off. So I'm gonna go ahead and flip it over. Look at that, it's nice and fluffy. I get that. All right, lights up again. Remember, we want that steam to disappear. So let's see what it looks like in a little bit. All right, that should do it. Lift it up, look at that. Look at that, that's nice. And sometimes I like to take it then and put it in the air fryer for maybe another three or four minutes just to crisp it up a little more like a cookie, but that's awesome. Look at that. All right, next we're gonna do the chocolate chip cookie. Now you can see one of my other videos where I did the chocolate chip cookie and froze it, and made it into little cookie dough balls and, and kind of flattened them out a little bit and put them in the oven. That's my favorite way of doing it, but if you want something quick, we can do it as a, as a waffle or on the griddle. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and do that now. We're gonna go ahead and do two tablespoons of water followed by one tablespoon of egg whites because if we don't do that, it's gonna be, it's gonna get real hard in the waffle maker or in the griddle. Um, so just, you're gonna need that egg white. And once again, it's not a whole lot, so it's okay. You can deduct a little bit of it from your protein for your lean, uh, but I just don't worry about it because it's really not a big amount. I'm gonna add the egg white. Be good if I take the top off. Add that in there. Now we're gonna go ahead and put, we're gonna mix. Scrape off pieces from the tool. Nice little texture there. We're gonna take it over to the griddle. Open up the griddle, don't forget your Pam, your spray. cookie dough in there. Every little bit of it. Don't want to lose those chocolate chips either. Just kind of spread that out a little more. Close it up. Remember, we're not waiting for the light to turn off. All that's gonna do is just for me to flip it over, but we really want that smoke to disappear before we are done. So let's see what it looks like. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and flip it over. Look at that, it's puffing up nice. Flatten it out just a little bit. Close it up. Let's see what it looks like when it's done. All right, should be done. Look at that. Nice. So this is another one that you can stick in the air fryer after just to kind of crisp it up a little bit. That's beautiful. All right, let's see what's next. All right, next up is my tried and true breakfast every single morning. I love the pancakes. But one thing I found, as many of you probably know, the pancakes can be a little dry at times. So you could put some sugar-free syrup, which is fine. Um, I'm not a big syrup guy, you know, but that's one option. But one thing I found is if I mix it with the butterscotch, I'm sorry, that was the wrong one. The butterscotch blondie, so you have the pancake and the butterscotch blondie, that makes it so, so good. No syrup needed, mix it up really making two servings there, or two fuelings there. Uh, you're getting one pancake and one waffle uh, per fueling. So really, really good. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna start off with seven tablespoons of water, seven. Just so we can have enough. Because remember, we're making two fuelings here. Seven. 
x7. All right, I'm going to put both fuelings in. Doesn't matter which one you put first, they're going to be mixed up anyway. Let's go ahead and mix that up. The pancake is very versatile. You can mix it with the oatmeal. You can mix it with cookie. You can mix it with a lot of things, you know, because it mixes real well and it doesn't mess up on the on the waffle maker or the griddle, but I like it with the butterscotch blondie. And they mix really quick, so you have to worry about mixing it too, too long. Just make sure you get everything so we don't lose anything. Bring that over. You can see, look at that. All right, over to the waffle maker. Here we go. All right, so for this one, I'm gonna need both the waffle maker and the griddle. Let's open up both of them and spray down the waffle maker. Just gonna pour it in till all the sides are filled. Close that up. Same time, I'm gonna spray down the griddle. Just gonna fill it up until it's about three quarters of the way. It's just gonna spread out by itself. Put that to the side and close it down. And what I'm looking for right now is for the light of the waffle to turn off. That's gonna tell me to go ahead and flip the griddle over for the pancake. So let's take a look at what that looks like. All right, so the waffle maker light just turned off, so I'm gonna go ahead and flip the griddle. Oh, man, I got a little stuck there, that's okay. Close that up. So this light turned on, and what I like to do is then wait for this light to turn off, and then the waffle's gonna be ready. I like it to cook just a little bit more. Like I said, the light doesn't necessarily tell you that it's done. I see still see smoke coming out. But what in my experience, what I've seen is once I flip this over and this light turns on, and then I let this one turn off, and then the waffle's ready and we're ready to go. All right, so this light just turned off, so I'm gonna open this up. Sometimes you'll get the waffle to stick to the top there, and I don't wanna to pull too hard because I don't wanna break it up, so then I'll use that knife like we talked about earlier just to get in the edges and have that waffle just fall off there. There you go, look at that, beautiful. And come over here. Pancakes ready, look at that. Together, and I'm gonna do it again. Remember this is two servings of fuelings. Just gonna put in, and we're gonna fill it up until it hits the edge. Close that up. This one's always going to end up being a little bit more than the first one. If you want it even, even, just do one at a time. But same thing. I'm going to let it cook. When this one turns off, I'm going to flip this one. Then when this one turns off, then it's done. Enjoy. All right, next we're going to do the chocolate brownie mix as a waffle. I'm going to need two tablespoons of water. Oops, a little bit there, a little bit here. Now we're gonna go ahead and put the mix in. Sometimes you'll get that one area where it won't come off. So sometimes I'll just take some scissors, just to cut it. If not, I'll just be pulling on it all the time and it's not gonna get it where I want to open. Pour the mix in. Just mix it up. And this one, honestly, sometimes I just like eating it after I mix it because it's kind of like chocolate pudding. But for this video, we're going to go all the way through. 
and we can show you what the waffle looks like. Right, remember, scrape off the excess there so we don't have any of the dry feeling mix in there and mix it up. Get a good consistency. See what it looks like. All right, spray it down. And we're gonna put the mix in. Bring it out. Just kind of spread that out a little bit. It'll get a bigger waffle. Here we go. See what it looks like. All right, so the brownie really doesn't take that long. Maybe a couple minutes, but looking for that smoke to disappear. All right, came out pretty clean. Take it off the bottom. All right, so pardon the background noise here. I've got the air fryer going for the next feeling I'm gonna show you. But let's go ahead and finish up the mac and cheese. So let's spray down the waffle maker. And it's still a little runny. And the mac and cheese does tend to run over a lot. So I'm gonna do two on here and remember you see it kind of bubbling up a lot you don't want to close it all the way let it cook a little bit and then you're going to slowly slowly close that top just kind of monitor the edges you see it kind of spilling over a little bit just pull up a little bit i'm going to let it cook a little bit on top before i close it all the way so it doesn't overflow and cause a big mess on the cleanup Pushing over just a little bit, so I'm gonna pull it up just a little bit. I'll let that cook on the top a little bit before I close it. I get a little bit of run on there, and it happens, but I do love the mac and cheese this way. I also like to add the laughing cow cheese to it. Just adds that extra grilled cheese feel to it. It's not too bad. Get a little bit of spillage on this side, but not too much. We'll let that sit there. Remember, the light does not determine that it's done. We're looking for that smoke to disappear. We'll see what it looks like when it's done. All right, mac and cheese is done. Oh, look at that, came off nice and clean. Gotta get the rest of it off. Sometimes they like to use the knife so it doesn't break apart. We can lift from the bottom. that flip it over nice let's go to the next one all right next we're going to do the roasted garlic mashed potatoes and do four tablespoons of water and then normally i do this with the laughing cow cheese but for this video I'm just going to keep it simple four tablespoons of water and the mix Let's see what that waffle looks like. Pour that in. Mix it up until you get a good consistency. No clumps, no dry particles in there. 
Use that tool to scrape off the excess. Keep mixing. Very good. Take a look. All right, over to the waffle maker. All right, let's spray down. Your waffle maker for the potatoes. Just get all of it. It's always good to let it sit for a little bit to thicken up, to not put it in so watery. And just spread it out so we get the whole thing. Close it down. Probably be about four minutes. Let's see what it looks like. All right, potato should be done. It's a little sticky to the top, that's okay. Look at that, it blew up nice. Look at that, beautiful. All right, let's try the next one. All right, next is gonna be one of the new fuelings. I'm gonna do the cinnamon roll, and this one I'm gonna do on the air fryer. You can do it on the waffle maker. It just takes two tablespoons of water and then put it in the waffle maker, but I found putting it in the air fryer is excellent. So we're just gonna need two tablespoons of water. Put the mix in because when I feel it clumped up on the top, I just give it a little bang to knock it down and just stir it up. Not a lot of water on that, it's okay. But I found putting it in an air fryer just makes it blow up like a nice cinnamon roll instead of just a little flat waffle. You can do it either way, tastes great either way. All right, look at that. All right, let's put it on some parchment paper. All right, so what we're gonna do now is we're just gonna do a little spray on the parchment paper. And then we're just gonna put that cinnamon roll mix right on the paper try not to lose any get all of it in there because that'll give you a nice thick cinnamon roll there you can shape it if you want nice little circle not doesn't matter and we're going to transfer this over to the air fryer here we go all right Open up the air fryer and just put the parchment paper in there. Kind of spread that out. Close it up and do 350 for like six minutes. All right. We'll let it cook and let's see how it looks. All right. Cinnamon roll is done. Open that up. Wow. Look at that. Beautiful. Put that over there. Move on to the next one. All right. Last one we're going to do is the cheddar biscuit mix. And this one's very versatile. You can do a lot of things with this. You can make little pizzas. You can make little sandwiches. You can make uh, little crackers. But for this, we're just going to do the air fryer like we did for the cinnamon rolls that come out nice big and puffy like a like a roll like a bread roll which is very you know we can't have bread in this program so it's nice to have a bread alternative uh, with this cheddar biscuit mix so all you need is two tablespoons of water two and then the mix it up this one mixes real easy as well you take long at all it's 
those edges. Make sure none of the dry particles remain. Give it a nice mix. That. Next step. All right, just like the cinnamon roll, we're just gonna spray down the parchment paper. Just so. We'll go ahead and put the cheddar biscuit mix on there. A little bit more. transfer this over to the air fryer and let's see what it looks like all right so we're going to go ahead and put the cheddar biscuit mix in the air fryer spread that out just like the other 350 and i'm going to do seven minutes for this one and then we'll see how it turns out. All right, so it is ready. Oh, wow. Look at that. Cheddar biscuit. Look at that. Smells so good. Wow, so good. All right, let's take a look at what we've made. All right, look at all these waffles and air fryer fuelings, just amazing. It's just like meal prep. You can do a bunch of these all at once, put them in some sandwich bags, put them in the freezer, put them in the fridge for the next day. You are ready to go because you're getting your five and one in. These fuelings are amazing. Let's look at that. You smell them? I can, they smell delicious. So hopefully you'll be able to take advantage of that and. Make some of your fuelings this way now. If you don't already have a mini waffle maker dash griddle, it's time to get one. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Over the Hill Fitness. Hopefully this will help you on your journey because this is the way that I do my fuelings. It just makes them better for me. You know, they taste better, they're bigger, they're more filling. Uh, it's just another way of adding to this awesome, awesome program to help you on your health journey. So like always, it's a great day to be alive. It's a great time to hold each other accountable. If someone hasn't told you lately, you matter. Believe in the possibilities of being great, treat each other the way you wanna be treated, and never be satisfied as there's always an opportunity to be a better version of yourself. Have a great rest of the day and see you soon.